Its name is active denial system, but it is commonly called pain ray. It was presented to the press on January 24, 2007, by the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate of the Pentagon. It is a microwave weapon that can be also used to control the crowd. Let's see a footage realized by the Pentagon for the presentation of this non-lethal weapon. Our troops across the globe are involved in complex peacekeeping, humanitarian and combat operations. There are no longer clear lines that define a battlefield or a combat zone. Operational areas include a complicated mix of military personnel, insurgents and non-combatants. For this reason, our men and women in uniform want and need a safe and effective non-lethal extended range deterrent that provides them the ability to protect themselves and innocent non-combatants during military operations. In response to this need, the Active Denial System Advanced Concept Technology Demonstration has built the first non-lethal counter-personnel directed energy weapon. The ACTD is designed to match new concepts with the needs of our warfighters and expedite the process of developing, testing, and fielding these technologies so that we can more quickly meet the needs of our men and women serving in operational environments. ADS uses a directed beam of millimeter wave energy that penetrates about 1 64th of an inch into the adversary's skin. The energy is harmless, the superficial heating effect is nearly instantaneous, and the adversary instinctively flees. ADS is an ideal choice for protecting members of the U.S. military and their equipment in a wide range of operations, particularly when the use of lethal force would be counterproductive. ADS utilizes groundbreaking technology that is designed to save lives, protect the innocent, and limit collateral damage while effectively repelling adversaries. The direct and controlled non-lethal beam of ADS gives the system extraordinary potential for use in situations where insurgents hide among non-combatants. ADS will give our troops a greater capability to determine the intent of individuals before they reach a threatening range. The technology was developed by the Air Force Research Laboratory and under the auspices of the Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Advanced Systems and Concepts and the DOD's Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate. ADS will provide our men and women on the battlefield an extraordinary new capability. For the first time, they will have a non-lethal system with a range greater than that of traditional small arms weapons. It will give them the flexibility they need on today's complex battlefield. ADS will minimize fatalities by providing our forces a non-lethal option between shouting and shooting. ADS and directed energy are the future of non-lethal weapons and represent a new capability that our warfighters want and need to succeed in today's missions. It could seem the ideal weapon whose deployment on the ground could be possible from 2010, but some British researchers describe this weapon in a different way. The idea is that you can have a weapon capable of keeping people at a distance by inducing pain, and that the weapon uh, can fire multiple shots depending on its reserves of energy, but also that um, it uh, can dissuade people from entering a control zone and that you can uh, have a self-regulating people uh, weapon because as people get uh, uh, filled with pain because of this technology they will move out of the control zone.
it's very likely that this weapon will be used in the real field and of course the psychological danger is that people will then no longer take part in uh, mass demonstrations against the political actions of their elected representatives because they'll be frightened of being hurt and they'll be hurt by a weapon which will leave no telltale traces so for example if you are blinded by this weapon it will be extremely hard to prove that it was as a result of your exposure to it. If these weapons would be deployed in our towns will our societies be less free than today? I, I, I think so. I, I think that would be the intention of doing it and it's likely to be successful. Whether people would find ways to protect themselves um, is, is unclear but certainly at the moment the capacity to just come out on the street and demonstrate is one which a lot of people take who are not prepared to take more risky political action. The temptation with a weapon of this sort is to deploy it um, as a means of creating a chill effect. And that means that if people are going on a demonstration to ex exercise their democratic freedom and civil liberties know that they may end up uh, damaged or maimed or hurt in some way, then it, it's, it's easy to understand a future where people think the risk of protest is not worth it. Now let's see on the video granted by the Department of Defence how a person hit by the ADS ray reacts. I was very struck in the video by the fact that the person who received the pain, the journalist who received the pain, was prepared. He was clearly not going to react very strongly in front of an audience largely of men. He wanted to do a John Wayne type act. English researchers are worried about the fact that this weapon could have on human rights, but also on the human body, on neurotransmitters, on eyes, on psyche. Well, uh, they claim that the radiation only penetrates to within a fraction of a millimetre of the skin, and so that the damage-sensing neurons within the skin, which have terminals which are quite close to the edge, are activated, and this can cause a sensation of pain. But of course, um, heating up the eyeball or the testes uh, can also be uh, damaging and dangerous. And as far as I can see, there's no evidence whether this uh, weapon is or is not dangerous given in prolonged doses uh, to people in terms of effects on sight or indeed even on effects on um, DNA within the skin and whether this uh, weapon could actually be uh, cancerogenic, could actually cause tumours to arise. The radio frequency weapons cause an increase in the release of neurotransmitters. What does that mean? Well, we know rather little of, of uh, the neurotransmitter story. There are many more than were originally thought and they're involved in very complex ways in multiple pathways which is why giving someone a drug to try to correct one problem can cause all sorts of unforeseen further problems and certainly uh, the neurotransmitters which are involved in pain are involved in many other processes essential ones and mood changes and differences and so on so we really can't be sure of the short or long-term effects. Well, there are some studies on cells uh, grown in dishes which suggest that neurotransmitters, which are small chemicals present at the terminals of nerve cells, are released in response to this kind of uh, ir irradiation. And so when this happens in the skin, you'll get small peptides released which will cause blushing and redness as the blood vessels in the skin dilate. You'll also get release of uh, proteins which regulate the immune system are these effects limited to the peripheral nervous system or do they also involve the central nervous system? 
Well, the claim is that the radiation will only penetrate the skin, and so it shouldn't go through the skull and affect the central nervous system. But of course, the neurons that are activated are actually directly wired into the central nervous system, so there will be effects on the central nervous system. And it's possible that long-term exposure to this weapon, which will cause um, these neurons to fire off repeatedly, could, could cause long-term changes in the spinal cord and in the pain pathways within the central nervous system. And again, this is yet another area which has been uh, investigated not at all by the Pentagon, which I think is, is really a, uh, a very essential for them before they can claim that this weapon is safe.